Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about five tips for shooting fast action. Fast subjects. They are so tough to shoot. Not only are they moving around the water column so fast you can barely see them, but these types of subjects will push your camera settings to the limits. They'll push your camera's abilities to the limits. They'll push your photo skills to the limits. Luckily, there are a few tips and tricks we can use to maximize our skill and our gear's abilities in order to bring home some good shots. So let's take a look at the first tip. When we're shooting underwater with strobes, we are limited by that maximum sink speed. So my default for underwater shooting is 1 1 25th of a second, and that can be at depth depending on the visibility. That's generally a good default. When I'm shooting something fast, I might go to 1 1 60th of a second, even 1 200th of a second. Now, when we increase the shutter speed, we're letting less light into the camera. So if we're down deep, that's not going to work so well for us. We can try bumping up the ISO you know, increase the ISO to let more light in the camera, increase the shutter speed, which decreases light in the camera, and by doing so, we'll still have the same exposure. The thing to keep in mind is to always be looking at your histogram. 1 1 25th may work well, and if you go to 1 1 60th at depth, it may not work. Your image may be too dark regardless of the ISO. If you're near the surface, maybe with sea lines, you can go to 1 200th of a second and oftentimes be very okay. You're just using the strobes to fill in the light at that point. So look at that shutter speed when you're shooting fast subjects, and if you can increase it, increase it. When you're using strobes, if you can get close to the animal, that will also help freeze some of the action. Number two. To help capture fast subjects, it helps when your autofocus is tracking the subject. So I always use continuous focus. On Canon, it's called Servo or AI Servo. And when you're tracking the subject, the autofocus is keeping the focus locked on the subject as it's moving around, which helps you from getting those big nasty hunts right at that moment of action that you want to capture. So by half depressing your shutter, you're able to follow the subject and then shoot when they get close enough within strobe range or close enough so you don't have a lot of water between you and the subject, and you can shoot right away. If you're not using continuous focus, you may be watching the subject come and then all of a sudden this, the camera hunts and you're going to miss that shot. So always try and track the subject. And number three. With continuous autofocus, tracking your subject can be a little touchy when you're half depressing your shutter. Certain housings like CNC will allow you to adjust the tension on the shutter trigger so you can get more sensitive or less sensitive depending on your preferences. But with all that aside, I like to shoot with back button focus. And with back button focus, I assign that half depress, that autofocus, to the AF on button so that I can track the subject and shoot and it makes it a lot easier. So we have a complete tutorial on back button focus in the video series, so definitely check that out. Out for more information, but it will help you so much with that continuous autofocus and your fast subjects. So here's number four. Most of you know by now, but I generally try to emphasize shooting one carefully composed frame at a time, except in certain shooting situations. And this is one of those shooting situations where you want to shoot multiple shots. You've got those fast subjects, maybe they're Galapagos penguins, going -da 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 -da, zoom, zipping by you and you need to capture the shot. Shoot a few frames. One of the things that I like to do is shoot my strobes on half to three quarters power. It just happens that with my settings, that's a nice power for exposure when shooting wide angle. And it also helps because when you're shooting any sort of strobe, whatever brand you're using at half to three quarters power, they're going to recycle so much faster than if you're shooting at full power. Of course, if you were shooting at quarter power, they'd recycle even faster. And the benefit there is that you can shoot multiple frames when the subject's coming by you. So you can shoot bang, 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 bang as the subject's coming by because your strobes are recycling fast enough, you're gonna have great exposure on all those scenes. So try to shoot multiple frames in this sort of fast action, fast subject shooting situation. And here's number five. Review, review, review. Review the images on the histogram, but do it in between those fast action sessions. Those fast subjects are coming by, they'll generally do a pass or two, you might have a minute of rest, and then you'll have another quick action moment. So review those images, you know, go hit that playback button, the info button, the display button, whatever it is on your housing and your camera to look at the images and the exposure, the way you're lighting them, make sure the subjects are sharp, that the autofocus is locking on, that you don't have backscatter in the sides and the corners, and with those, and with those 
those improvements um, in between shooting sessions, you'll be able to capture the action while also getting the shots you want, at least by the end of the session, because you're always making those improvements. So there's no need to stop mid-action unless it's just action that's non-stop, like a, a huge bait ball or something like that, in which case you'll stop and review your images, make your improvements. But generally, this action is going to be bursts. So look at those images in between the bursts and you'll get the best shots at the end of the day. And bonus. I, I don't know what that was. That was kind of weird. But uh, point being, we have a bonus tip too. And that's that when we're shooting these fast animals and these fast subjects, you know, big, small, little, medium, whatever it might be, we can't always have our face glued to the viewfinder. So shooting from the hip is just going to happen. So I'll encourage shooting from the hip. You know, absolutely shoot whenever the, the action's happening. Maybe shooting from the hip and shooting up will help you get a different composition. Maybe you have a sea line all over you and that's really the only way you can get some cool angles really close to its face. So definitely don't be afraid to shoot from the hip. Still review your images afterwards and then have at it. You know, there's nothing right and wrong. I could guarantee that a lot of great photos we've seen out there have been shot from the hip, especially with a lot of fast action. So incorporate that as well if that's the only way to get the shot. And that's it. Hopefully these tips will help you bring back great action shots of really fast subjects. As always, if you have any questions, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Thanks.